One final note about second order reactions. Uh, for the previous video, we assumed that our rate law only depended on one species. All right, so it was just on A squared and it's second order in A. Another way you can have a second order reaction is that your rate law can depend on multiple reactants, but each being first order. So you can have K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. Right, so this is pretty common, is to have multiple things that your rate law depends on. Uh, and so the total order is two, but each reactant is only first order. Um, and so um, I just wanted to quickly go over sort of the results of this. We're not going to go through the whole derivation. Um, that's in your textbook if you want to look at it. Um, but the basic idea is we can integrate this just like, just like we did for uh, the other ones. Um, and we get a more complicated expression here. Um, so the expression we get is that kt is equal to, we still get this 1 over dependence uh, for the initial rates, or the initial concentrations. So we get 1 over a naught minus 1 over b naught in the denominator here. And then this is multiplied by a natural log expression of the concentration of a times the concentration of B naught divided by the concentration of B. Oh, it really doesn't like drawing my Bs. Uh, times the concentration of A naught. All right. And so, yeah, we didn't go through the derivation of this, but this is, this is the equation that you get if you want to consider two different reactants, each of them first order. Um, so you can see, sorry, you get this hybrid between a first order and second order uh, equation. Now, there's one specific situation where this equation won't work. Um, and uh, if you pay attention, you have a one over something that's a difference. And there will, uh, there's a certain point at which this will be undefined. And that is if we have equal concentrations of A and B to start with. So if A naught is equal to B naught, this equation doesn't work because of this denominator here goes to zero and you divide by zero and that's um, that's undefined. So for that specific situation where a naught is equal to b naught, um, we we can basic we basically you can show that. So I'm, I'm again skipping the actual derivation here, but what's the what's the end result? The end result is that essentially you can treat each of these as, as being second order sort of by themselves. So under this specific condition where these are equal to each other, you can show that you have a dependence for the concentration of A that looks just like a second order reaction as if A was, was the only thing there. So you get 1 over A is equal to 1 over A naught plus KT. And same thing for B. B follows the exact same equation, just with concentrations of B instead of A. So this is sort of a special case of second order reactions where um, you have different things that it depends on. But we can solve these as well. We didn't go through the, the you know, entire derivation of this, but these are the end results. So again, if A0 and B0 are equal to each other, you get what looks just like a normal second order reaction. If they're not equal to each other, you need to use this more complicated expression that um, has both A0 and B0 together uh, in A and B. Um, so you can't really separate them from each other unless they happen to be equal to each other. So that is it for second order reactions. Um, and that is it for this section of the chapter. So next we're going to look at um, reversible reactions, so reactions that can go forward and reverse, and keeping track of the rates of the forward and reverse reactions. Um, and, but we'll get to that in the next video.